Please, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning, for this great opportunity and the gift of life that you've given to us. We're committing this workshop into your hands. We're praying that help us to acquire all the necessary skills, wisdom, and knowledge to be able to apply all that we will learn, even for both facilitators and participants, so that we can impact our communities, the society, and the world at large. We thank you. We ask that Lord may be with us that this workshop Will be fruitful. We thank you. We ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Ajobu. So, um, as we are all aware, we are all coming from different backgrounds. We have some representatives coming from the University of Health and Allied Science. We have some coming from the whole teaching hospital. We have some coming from the nurses training college and various institutions. The idea for congregating here will be made known to all of us as we proceed. But I want to invite the University Librarian for the University of Health and Allied Sciences in the person of Dr. Mrs. Theresa Edu to give us a welcome message. Thank you very much, Dominic. Can you hear me, please? Yes, please, we can hear you. All right, thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And um, our special invited guests and participants. On behalf of the management of UHAS, I want to thank each and every one of you for being with us here today. This is a program that has been planned over a period, and today marks the launching of this program. The project is part of efforts by the University of Health and Allied Sciences Library to contribute to improving efficiency in the conduct of reproducible research, as well as to promote the translation of research into policy and practice. This project has spanned from 2020 to now. And it is sponsored by the Medical Library Association, specifically Librarians Without Borders. And it is being funded by the Elsevier Foundation. The theme we have put on this project is increasing access and use of research for life resources by health and agriculture professionals and students in the Volta region of Ghana, 2020 to 2021. And so basically we are hoping that at the end of this project, we would all come together as academicians, researchers, clinicians, policy makers, and civil society organizations who work in the health and agricultural sciences discipline to collaborate with each other share knowledge on the various resources we have, and then also to conduct responsible research. We also aim to establish a multidisciplinary and a collaborative research community of practice where we can share current research information for our continued professional development. Basically, we will be using the UN Research for Life resources in the promotion of this collaboration. Today, we are launching this project, basically for trainers. And so we are hoping that the trainers will in turn go out and train others. It is going to be a blended approach. In fact, we are going to have a blended approach to this program over the next six weeks. And so some of the program will be online and then we would also have a face-to-face -face program. I think that I would leave the details for our e-resources and training librarian, Mr. Fred Ahibo, to give all those details um, after I'm done with the welcome address. 
On this note, on behalf of the board that organized this program, I wish to welcome all of you to this program. And I hope and trust that at the end of the day, we'll be equipped so that we can also equip other people. You are all welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mrs. Theresa Edu. Thank you for those um, insightful welcome message. So some, some information from the message that Dr. just gave. The idea of gathering here is to equip us with the requisite skills and knowledge to find the right information, basically um, using the Research for Life platform to conduct responsible research and to also encourage collaboration among the various stakeholders in the health and agriculture sector, especially in the Volta region. So I want to call on Mr. Fred Haibo, the e-resource librarian at UHAS to throw more light on the project for us. Yes, thank you very much. Please, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you so much. Good morning again. And uh, thanks to my boss, the University Librarian, for the warm welcome. Um, I'm sure many of the participants here uh, may have encountered me already, one way or the other, uh, on the social media platform and our team's collaborative environment as well. Um, yes, as the University Librarian um, indicated, I will actually be taking you briefly through what to expect in terms of the cost structure and some other final um, details of the project. So I'll quickly share my screen and walk you through the process. All right, so as already indicated by the University Librarian, this program uh, or rather project is sponsored by the Medical Library Association's Librarians Without Borders with funding from the Elsevier Foundation. And the project is uh, for the period 2020 to 2021. And the aim as titled is to increase access and use of the United Nations uh, Research for Life e-resources. And now I'm going to explain the project covering the following items, the strategy and goal, the specific objectives for this particular project, the methodology that we are using, and the evaluation. Uh, I won't cover everything. And uh, of course, pardon me if some of the items here uh, have changed because almost every day the planning board is making inputs and we are changing things and I couldn't actually update my slide this very morning. So some things may change, but I'll explain all of them. All right. So the project is actually um, conceived within a framework. And I believe the Investor Librarian already mentioned the issue of responsible conduct of research and this framework actually uh, came out of a publication from the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Engineering and Institute of Medicine in 2009. Uh, the title of that particular publication is Convenient Scientist, the third edition. Um, the ideas espoused here were actually carried uh, up and visualized, as you can see on the left, the visualization here was by the National Healthcare Group of Singapore in 2010, based on the uh, National Academy of Sciences publication on being a scientist. Within this framework of the responsible conduct of research, we see a lot of emphasis laid on what you already know as research ethics. But for the focus of this project, our goal is to increase access and use of the Research for Life programs. And uh, we initially singled out Hinari and Agora because we're focusing on the health and agri disciplines. But from the 1st of July this year, 
uh, Research for Life had actually updated their platform and have unified most of these resources. And so we only have Agora and uh, ADI. Agora stands for Access uh, to Global Online Research in Agriculture. And the ADI, A -R -D -I, is Access to Research and Development uh, Innovation or something like that. So they are the only two that are still standing on their own. The rest have been unified into a single search interface. We'll be using that uh, as part of our lessons to see how we can access scientific publications. So that is what we are going to be using as a steady environment uh, for all the things we are going to be doing within the framework of responsible conduct of research. Now, the key areas for us that we are going to be touching on uh, in this framework will include uh, mentor and training relationships, of course, uh, the Invest Liberian has already indicated the fact that we envision that this collaboration that we are starting today will outlive the project life and lead to a multidisciplinary um, research ecosystem established around the principles that we are espousing here today as responsible conduct research, and that we will be able to help each other from the policy the civil society, academic, researcher, and all these backgrounds to improve the quality of research uh, and translate our research into policy and practice within the Volta region and nationally. We are therefore going to be working closely with each other. They are very experienced uh, academics and researchers among us. They are very experienced uh, civil society uh, organization uh, members who have been doing a lot of implementation work at the community level. They are very highly skilled and uh, reputable clinicians among us who have been working with a lot of patients and they have so much data on disease and all manner of things. So we hope that these relationships will help build each other up within this uh, network. Then of course, peer review is actually directly linked to that. These are the various aspects of the responsible conduct of research or RCR that we are going to be focusing on. And some of these things that I'm mentioning are not going to come directly as teachings in certain modules, but are going to be built uh, latently into all the practice that we are going to be having together on our online platforms. Of course, authorship and publications are another uh, key area which is actually the focus of the entire project. All the other elements we are looking at is going to be building up towards the issue of research and how to publish. Then of course, collaborative research is exactly what this project is actually hinged on. So that tells us uh, why we framed the project within this particular concept. Then of course, data management issues, practices. One very major component of uh, the training course that we are about to embark upon from next week uh, is that we are going to learn how to manage our literature, how to manage uh, data and all of that. All of these are going to be part of what we are going to focus on. And of course, specifically, we are hoping that uh, since this particular phase, this phase one of the project is about training trainers, as indicated by the University Librarian, you will go back and train others, okay? So a lot of uh, care is taken to actually prepare the interactions that we are going to be having in order to enhance the capacity of the trainers or the participants at this particular uh, first phase of the project to go and train others that they are representing. Because every member of this TOT uh, project or phase is actually representing a particular department or organization or school. So you go back and train your colleague staff. There's actually a second component, which is what the second objective is targeting. That one deals with community-wide trainings. So in the community-wide training, we are looking at extending the training in a limited way to all members of the organization. So for those in higher education and professional schools, it will include other staff and students as well. But of course, that will not have the level of detail that the training of trainers 
uh, phase is going to cover. Now, I uh, already mentioned that some of the issues here, uh, you have to forgive me because we have not updated them. The first one is, is that originally the plan was to have a three-day face-to-face workshop. But of course, with all the COVID issues, the planning board has tried to do a lot of updates to that. And currently, as uh, Dr. Edu already indicated, we have finally settled on a blended approach. So of course, we are going to have the face-to-face -face training. It may not be up to the three days any longer, but most of our work is going to be virtual uh, using the Microsoft Teams collaborative platform. But for the second phase, which is the community-wide training, is going to be purely virtual. There will not be any face-to-face -face interactions with the participants. Very much uh, dear to our heart is the issue of assessment and evaluation. We really, really want to um, get a lot of feedback from you on how to reshape our efforts uh, for our vision is big, and we need your help to shape that vision into a much concrete reality. So, of course, from the planning stages, we have had a lot of participation in the conduct of some baseline surveys that helped us to understand the needs of the various institutions. Of course, it is not the end. We will still give a pre-course assessment for all the participants to look at their expectations from this particular training workshop and also to understand a few uh, differences in terms of levels of experience so that we'll know exactly how to go about administering the uh, contents of our training. Then, of course, within the training course, there are going to be a lot of assessments going on, and we are going to be deploying a number of tools. Uh, one secret about this, I think I mentioned it briefly uh, ahead or before this time, is that most of the things that we want to take away are not necessarily going to be instruction-based, but they are going to be practice-based. So you are going to see that we are going to be deploying so many tools. It has already started. I know many of you have not used Teams before. It's your first time. It is one of the ways of getting you to familiarize with that tool, which you can actually deploy in your department or within your research team to coordinate collaborative effort. We are going to be using a lot of these means of trying to familiarize with available tools that we can use to, to help do so many things. And one of the areas we are going to be dealing with is the assessment area. So for lecturers or those who be organizing uh, community engagements or uh, research dissemination or even conferences or small seminars, you know there are so many a helpful productive tools that you can use to gauge the knowledge level and acceptance of your participants. We are going to be using all of that during the workshop. Then of course, for our monitoring, evaluation and learning, we are going to also uh, require that you do a post course evaluation for us so that all that went well, what did not go well, and um, how we can improve, we will learn uh, from all of that. Um, so far, so far, there are some things we have already done and some that uh, we need to be looking at quickly. Uh, just a quick update. Uh, at the very start, we realized that since we are going to use the Research for Life resources, we needed our participating organizations to have access. So for the teaching hospital and the education institutions, both the professional and the higher education institutions, we try to hook them up to have their own uh, institutional login credentials. I think so far, um, all the institutions are hooked except the Ghana Coalition of NGOs in Health. Um, Reverend Osei, I'm sure you are part of this meeting. I think we'll discuss this later to see how we can get uh, access for you, but we need to discuss it well and see um, at what level, maybe at the level of the Volta region chapter, you can all have a single login access that your member organizations can use. We will discuss that and see. Uh, otherwise, I will have to uh, 
discuss with my planning board to see if we can secure a temporary login for those who don't have their institutional access to use during the training period. Then, of course, uh, we have also uh, established the collaborative platform that I mentioned, the Microsoft Teams. A number of you are already there, and uh, I'm briefly going to go to that as part of uh, familiarization, but it is not the actual orientation. We'll do that perhaps later on in the week or next week. But at this point, I want to mention it because um, there are some issues currently. Uh, it does not seem like a requirement for you to have a Microsoft account, but because of the difficulty a number of people are getting using other emails to log in, I indicated from the, uh, on the WhatsApp group from my welcome message that participants should actually create a Microsoft uh, Outlook account. Okay, if you create that account, using it to log into the Teams app is much, much easier. Although it is not the strictest rule, I've seen and added a lot of people who didn't use Outlook and they are able to join, but many, many others also have not been able to join when they are using other email systems. So um, the point is, we are going to be collaborating on Teams and all the learning modules for the weeks are going to be placed there, the discussions, the collaborative work on the wikis, everything is going to happen right there. So it is necessary for every single participant to be able to join the Microsoft Teams um, group. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll indicate later, I'll even share the screen for you to see how it looks and how you should be seeing it at your end as well. Now the Teams app, for the sake of efficiency, we have suggested that you should install it for both your laptop and your mobile. The mobile is more handy and uh, it helps us get notifications more quickly, all right? But in terms of participating in real time, when you may have to use certain apps like Microsoft Office or some heavy typing work that you need to use to collaborate on tasks, you might resort to the laptop. So that is why we required that you have both the laptop and your smartphone installed uh, with the app. Now, I'll also uh, share with you the curriculum or the content for the period. And um, of course, there are actually two major parts. I'll be discussing that when I share that screen. All right, this is also not a very well updated um, slide. Now the numbers have increased for most of them, uh, but just do not look at the numbers for now, just pay attention to the organizations. So at UHAS, we have all our seven uh, schools and two institutes represented. And then all the other organizations that have been invited, we have the Volta Regional Directorate of Health Services. We have the uh, Volta Regional Department of Agri. We have the Volta Regional Directorate of uh, Sanitation Water Resources. We have the Midway Free Training College, Hawkeway, Nurses Training College, Ho, Nursing and Midway Free Training College, Keta, uh, the College of Agri at Ohau, the Ghana Coalition of NGOs in Health, Volta Chapter. They are made up of several civil society organizations that are working in the area of health but I put the umbrella body there to cover all of them. That number also is increased now, so don't look at the numbers at all. APUC, the University College for the EP Church. Then we have the whole technical, sorry, yeah, the whole technical university. We also have the whole teaching hospital and we have the School of Hygiene. I hope I have not missed any of them. Um, we also have some other individuals from other organizations that are agreed for cost uh, joining uh, have not indicated them here. So by this morning, when I checked, our WhatsApp platform is about 99 people uh, there right now, but I know that there are some who have not been added to the group platform yet. And on the Teams app, uh, I think I saw also about 67 people who are there, whether all of them are active, because I've added so many people who are unable to access yet. So 
We will be working on that from now till Friday. We hope to be able to resolve all the technical issues um, that are affecting the onboarding or the enrollment of our participants on the Teams app. All right, so uh, I'll end my sharing here for the, the update. Then I would like to briefly talk about the course content and structure for you to have just a, a glimpse of what we'll be doing. So basically the six week period is not going to be a very uh, intensive work. The reason why we spread it over the period is that we are very mindful of techno stress. We know that already a lot of us are working with technologies. We have lecturers among us. We have clinicians who are working, researchers. A lot of people are engaged already in so many online platforms. And so adding this one, we didn't want to make it very stressful. So if you observe, we broke down all the learning materials or modules into smaller bits covering the weeks. All right, so what a six week period, what we are going to be doing is that on Sunday every week, starting from next Sunday, we'll release a particular module. That module will contain certain sub-themes that you are supposed to go through for the week. There will be facilitators, but of course, as I indicated, I, we did not want to stress participants in this, so they will take the content, and as you can see, uh, for the first week, for example, there are three uh, different items. We have scientific landscape. We are going to be having uh, some PPT, that's PowerPoint presentations on that. And you can download this right there beside the module name, then followed by research assessment and biometrics, and then research for life. All these are downloadable. I'm going to share this with all participants. But as I indicated, we don't want to dump everything on you. So we'll release them weekly. Now, for the first week, starting on Monday, the 20th, we will have some guest facilitators. And this is what the guest facilitators will do. Because we are not going to be meeting live online every week, we are only going to collaborate through the teams without a direct live meeting. Each participant is going to be digesting their own content. But then in the middle of the week, on Wednesdays at 10 to 12 noon, we will have an open forum. Okay, that will be an online meeting, perhaps on Zoom. These meetings are to help participants to put across their questions and all other burning issues that they have identified while uh, digesting the content that has been provided for the module. Then on Fridays every week, we will also uh, provide a task, a task that the participants will collaborate on or work on individually. And all these things will be happening within the Microsoft Teams uh, space. Then in the second week, we will move to discovery and reuse of scholarly literature. There again, all the materials that you need we provided. And as you can see, there are about four of there are four items there to identify information sources using information resources, intellectual property and copyright issues, then reference management. Now, some of these items are at the introductory level for you to familiarize with the concepts, but they will be moved to the practical or the face-to-face -face session where real hands-on will happen. For example, the reference management, uh, searching across the research for life, content portal, and all of that, we'll be having very live sessions where all the uh, 
information professionals will be available to guide you on what exactly to do. So as for the PowerPoint content, it is just for you to familiarize with what you are going to be doing. We'll also use the same period through our interactions on the online platforms to help you to install all relevant um, software or apps that we'll be needing for some of these things. So as and when the time happens or comes, to we'll introduce those things along the way. Then in week three, we are doing research for life proper. So we'll delve into this, the research for life uh, project that is run at the UN. In fact, uh, to give a small summary, the details will happen when we are actually on the course. But Research for Life is actually a public-private partnership agreement that the United Nations has negotiated with the commercial publishers of the West, publishers like uh, Elsevier, uh, Oxford. You know, these are expensive to subscribe uh, publishers. So the UN has tried to negotiate with them to make available their scientific publications for free or at a subsidized fee to the developing world, mainly Africa and Asia. And so these resources that we are talking about are not resources that are of low quality. They are resources that other institutions in the West, the Americas, Europe, are paying very heavily for. But based on our development, uh, dynamics, they, they use a lot of things. I'm sure uh, Dr. Um, Lenny Ryan will be taking you through that on the research for life. So they use our World Bank data, our human development index and things that make up uh, our categorization as a developing country. That is what they base our access on. And so there are certain rules about the research for life programs. Uh, for example, you cannot access them while you are outside the country because you might be in a jurisdiction which is not allowed to have free access to these resources. So all of that will be explained later. But week three is going to focus on the research for life and go much into details uh, with what we can do over there, what resources are available and how to apply them. Then week four will be focusing on certain collection specific resources. So week four will be a very critical week for us. We may have uh, breakouts even during our weekly meeting on Wednesday, because here we would like to focus on our various disciplines. For example, I know that you has and most of the uh, nursing and midwifery uh, training institutions, they will fall in health. They will focus on the health resources. Uh, I think including uh, the whole teaching hospital, yes particularly the second item, the evidence-based medicine. That is what I think the HTH might be more interested in. Then other uh, NGOs, the GCNH people, who are also working in health, they will all be joining the health group. Then we also have a Greek, I think EPUC is into a Greek, HCU, a Greek, Ohio College of a Greek. So all the Greek uh, discipline people will also focus on their Greek resources and I can see development and innovation, global justice, and all these are areas of interest, I believe, for our CSOs as well. So in week four, we are going to strategize to see uh, how we make participants subscribe to the various groups and we facilitated quite separately. But of course, all these materials will be available to every participant. So you might be in health, but you are interested in global justice, all right? There's nothing stopping you from joining that group or using that resource. They will all be made available. For example, um, I'm sure all of us have seen the issues of justice and ethics uh, surrounding the COVID vaccines and all of that. While some countries are holding, some countries cannot get. So maybe you are a health person, but you're interested in global justice. All of these things will be made available. You see what kinds of resources you can use when you want to conduct your research in those areas. Now, in week five, in week five, which is the um, week starting the 18th, I think I, I didn't add the date here. I think that is a week starting the 18th to the 22nd. 
in that week, we are going to have our face-to-face. -face. So the 18th to the 22nd of uh, October, yes, we are going to have our face-to-face. -face, and that is where most of the practical things are going to happen, as I mentioned. We'll be looking deeply at what the various types of searches are and how you can use them to locate evidence for your research. Uh, basic advanced and systematic searching, we're going to look at that. We'll also look at open tools for literature discovery, because of course there are licensing issues, there are restrictions. It's not every single data or uh, literature that you can actually have access to. So we'll be learning how to go around uh, securing access to some of the literature or data when it is not openly available. Then of course, reference management using Mendeley, these are going to be very practical things we are going to do during the face-to-face -face session. Um, we have also, through our baseline, uh, received a lot of requests for certain uh, particular uh, you know, areas or gaps that we need to build capacity. So some of them, for example, using uh, your literature in terms of integrating the knowledge in your own knowledge base and writing a paper, how you can get certain productivity apps like Grammarly, Quillboards to help you with your, um, uh, you know, grammar and, uh, you know, paraphrasing and all those things to avoid plagiarism. We are going to work through all these things to help people, uh, you know, with their uh, manuscripts and uh, project proposals. Then, of course, as I mentioned, with most of the uh, requests coming in areas that we think should not be imposed on every participant, we have decided to include uh, the optional modules uh, within the week for our wrap up. So you see that some items like uh, advocacy toolkits and marketing might be good for the librarians who are more in charge of the resources in the various institutions. Then training audience in using research for life. I think this one, the TOT participants might want to uh, take part in that session because you are going to be training other people at your department. Um, we also saw during the baseline that some of the institutions are not uh, handling information literacy as a course. That is, they are not training their students on uh, literacy skills when it comes to information handling or data uh, literacy. So based on that request, again, we'll make it an optional module. Those who want to know how to uh, you know, get to develop the curriculum for that and get their institutions to buy into the idea of introducing a course on that. And every capacity that they need will try and get the resources and appropriate um, help for them. Then of course, there were so many other issues which are critical for many of our institutions. Uh, for example, we are dealing with students and students are presenting papers, they are doing assignments, they are presenting projects or research. And most of the inefficiencies that we see have also been requested. And uh, so we are going to be building capacities for those who are interested in the area of Microsoft Office proficiency, Google Space proficiency, uh, literature review. Those are all optional models, as you can see here. And they are going to be in the sixth week. That is the week starting 25th of October. So by the 31st of October, we'll bring down the curtain on this uh, training of trainers course. But as mentioned, that is just the first phase. The training of trainers is just the first phase. And the second phase will be the community-wide training, which the trainers that have been trained will actually help us to organize at their institutions. All right. Now, the final thing that I want to share in relation to the course a certification. So we indicated in the letters of invitation that uh, for the certificates of achievement to be given as trainers, you'll be required to complete 80% of the tasks that are prescribed under the course. So over here, I just want to highlight a few of these tasks uh, that include the completion of the pre-course assessment, 
the attendance of the weekly meetings. It is very critical because the weekly meetings give us the opportunity to share ideas, ask all the questions, get the facilitators to answer so many questions, and the attendance will be taken. So please, let's watch out for that. It's an element in the scoring. Then the evaluations for the week, every weekly module will be evaluated. I think I mentioned that Fridays will be posting tasks. Most of them will be collaborative. Your participation over there will also be monitored. Then you have to complete the post-course evaluation as well. And uh, of course, the key, the last one here, which is the key, you have to replicate this training at your institution. Now, when the course uh, actually starts on Monday, we are going to see a lot of this happening. Of course, I'll have to end here for time's sake, uh, but just to let you know that we will continue our engagements both through the Teams app and through the WhatsApp group. So please, uh, for any participant here who hasn't uh, been added to the WhatsApp group, please and please try and contact me or contact uh, Dominic. Uh, I don't know if Dominic's number is there. Dominic, please, you can, you can post your number in the chat so we can add you to the WhatsApp group. And of course, after the WhatsApp group, the next stage will be for you to get your Teams app on your smartphone and the laptop and we'll help you to enroll in the Research for Life course team. Thank you so much. That is just a, a brief way of introducing what we'll be expecting. Thanks again. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Haibo, for working us through the Research for Life project. And thank you, participants, for your patience and your keen interest in the project. Um, on this note, I want to call on Dr. Howard Osman to facilitate the Q&A session so that if any of our participants has a question or a comment, um, they, are, they can freely do that through the chat platform. So um, you, we can just put in our questions in the chat box, or if you want to speak, we just use the, uh, the you raise up your hand and so that you, Dr. Osman will call you to, to give your comment or your question. Yeah, yes, Mr. Dominic, thank you very much. I'm online and ready to take their questions and their comments. Kindly unmute yourself. If you have any question, please raise up your hand or write in the chat comment. Yes. Akuba's iPhone. Akuba. Uh -huh. Yes. Please, we are listening. The two of us are participating from the Department of Agri. But on the particip participation list, our name is not there. Our number is not there. Oh, OK. Yes. Uh, I indicated already that you shouldn't look at the, uh, the numbers because it is not updated. OK. okay so as I indicated, um, once you are here, it means you are already in the list. As for the numbers, okay. we are going to update them uh, currently. I hope you have also joined it. Microsoft Teams group. Yes, we have done it. Oh, that's great. So don't worry about that number. We'll update it. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Yeah, Antonio, we are listening to you. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I I joined late and um, it looks as if I couldn't um, grab some of the few things, but I will be glad if uh, in a summary, uh, you could tell me the benefit of this program. Then also, I would like to know whether uh, a certificate will be given <laughs> after the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your question will be answered. And uh, Antonio, your hand can go down. Your question will be answered. Akuba, your hand is still up. Uh, I wanted to find out if uh, during the presentation, there was some break in transmission. We couldn't hear some of the presentation. 
um, that was going on. So uh, how do we cover or fill that gap? Okay, your answers will be provided to your questions soon. Uh, Mr. Haiba, would you want to take this, uh, would you want to answer these questions before we continue or you want me to take all the questions first? I think I should respond along uh, as we go. Okay, so yeah. carry so, on. Yeah, so for, let me start from the back, the last one. Okay. Um, yes, uh, Akuba, yeah, we are recording this session and it will be made available on our Teams platform. So whatever you missed, I'm sure you, you will recover it when the recording is uh, provided. Yes, and uh, Mr. Antonio Gumado, yes, uh, he asked two questions. The second one, certificate. Yes, as I indicated, certificates will be provided, but uh, it is conditional. And it's incumbent upon completion of 80% of the tasks that are prescribed under the course. Then on benefit, um, how can I enumerate? One, as I mentioned, this course is a gathering of various um, organizations and individuals in the areas of health and agri, who are all working in various capacities for human development and community improvement. And so our aim is to foster a collaboration. I know that CSOs do a lot of grant writing. Researchers do a lot of grant writing. Both researchers and CSOs do a lot of evidence uh, seeking in order to produce the kind of content they share for funding opportunities and all of that. I know that um, the policy agencies like the ministries for agri, health and co all rely on data and evidence to write their policy briefs or make recommendations for interventions and all of that. Uh, I know that uh, water and sanitation are all related to health. It's all these things, every single person that is here is connected to the other some way, okay. somehow. Okay. So the aim is to build a network of these practitioners, policy makers, academics, and researchers who will work together in the discovery and dissemination of knowledge. Okay, so it is focused on helping every organization here to know how to access the scientific evidence and apply it in their own area of work. So if you are an NGO and you are trying to write maybe to the malaria control program for a grant, you will need to establish the evidence of what you are trying to solve as a problem in a certain community. That evidence is in research. And for you to access that research, you need the skills and knowledge of the sources where to look in order to gather the evidence to convince your uh, funding organization, all right? So that is the purpose. It's all a gathering around multidisciplinary and coll collaborative research. Um, Mr. Jabu. Yes, hello. Ah, you are there. So yes, I think Dr. Osman is trying to rejoin because okay. for, for those of us that support their campus, I, I would like to interrupt. All right, all right. You can, you can step in for her, all right, thank you. Okay, 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 all right. So I can see um, Prince Dodu uh, with a raised hand. Yes, you can uh, ask your question or any comment. Good, good morning. Yeah, morning. Uh -huh. uh, it is very unfortunate I came in late. Okay. Uh, so I didn't hear much, much of the discussion. I wanted to ask, if uh, the recorded voice will be placed in the uh, uh, platform, but uh, I heard uh, the officer saying that it will be done. Okay. Uh, moreover, if I, I, want, I want to suggest if uh, these Zoom meetings can be done in the evening, that is a, it's a suggestion, uh, just because some of us are engaged during the day. The reason why I, I was late to join was that I have to uh, meet my directors at the office. 
So okay. it's maybe to tell me. So I'm suggesting if it can be done in the evening time so that we can have ample time to have uh, to join okay. and then we all discuss what we are interested of. Yes, very well. Your your suggestion is not the prince. We'll, we'll put that across. Thank you. It's good that we all have a, a collaborative space. So once all the participants agree on a common time, that is fair by it's fine by us. All right, thank you very much. Alfred, we've not taken our leads able to participate in this. So I think the timing is critical and in relation to that, uh, that's why I want to know on daily, how many hours do I need to be able to participate in this? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Alfred, I think on the issue of um, how many hours to employ daily, um, that is why, as I indicated, we tried to make it a weekly module so we don't put stress on people's daily hours. So for example, uh, you have about a 27 slide presentation and uh, about two or three of them for the whole week. In terms of the hours per day, I would suggest that, well, you can use just an hour a day or two, it depends on your reading speed. But I don't want to state categorically uh, what you should do per day because for all the modules, the number of uh, presentations or themes are actually less than the number of days you have to cover them, okay? So it might not be a daily thing, but for engagement on the course, I'll suggest just two hours a day. If you can use less or more and still cover it, fine, but let me give on an average two hours. Okay, Dominic, are you here now? Yes, I'm here. All right. Um, I think Dr. Osman has still not uh, reconnected. I can see her. Uh, Patrick, I can see Patrick too. So please, you can go ahead to take the questions from the chat for us. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, because I went off, I lost the chat too. But oh, I saw yeah. Dr. Matilda, Dr. Matilda's question or comment. So she and then another comment had to do with the support that they would get for the community engagement. I think I also saw a similar question, but I don't know if I understood it well. Uh, it was asking about the community-wide training, the phase two. If it is about the follow-up training that the uh, trainers who are at this particular course will be doing at their various departments and institutions, the support we can give is technical. Okay? It's technical and uh, every other information uh, resource. Uh, financially, no, we cannot support the organization of uh, departmental level trainings. So it will be purely technical and uh, perhaps our expertise, if they need us to maybe handle a certain segment of their training, that is fine. On the phase two of this program, which is a community-wide training, that one, as I mentioned, is going to be virtual. So we will need the trainers from this particular course to mobilize their uh, institutions for us. And for institutions like you has that have multiple uh, stakeholders representing various aspects like our research institutes, the academic units, the library, we will have to work together to mobilize the rest of the community for that community-wide training. For the other schools, the professional schools like the nurses training, the midwifery, school of hygiene and the rest, the, the representatives currently on this training course will also have to come together as a group to mobilize their members for that second phase of the training. So that is the distinction I want to make between the two. I don't know whether I have clearly stated that. I think you have. Okay. Um, and colleague participants, I think we've gone beyond the one hour period we scheduled for this meeting. Yes. And I want to um, plead that we bring it to an end so that we take the rest to the um, team platform and exactly. have a lot of discussions there. All right, so thank you very much for, for your time and the comments and the questions. Um, I want to call on Mrs. Benedicta Bwedi to give us a vote of thanks. Uh, Mrs. Benedicta, 
Dr. Bwedi is an assistant librarian at the University of Health and Life Sciences Library. Good morning. Please, on behalf of the university librarian, Mrs. Dr. Teresa Edu, the organizer of the workshop, and everybody who made time to participate this morning, we are grateful to you. And we pray that next time when we call upon you, you'll be ready to join us. We thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you very much, um, Auntie Bene. Thank you, we are grateful. So all too soon, we'll have to come to an end of this very um, important program. And like we indicated, we'll take the rest to the WhatsApp platform and then the team um, platform. And most of these questions will be answered there. There was a comment, an earlier comment, where one of the participants wanted to see the faces um, of participants and facilitators. I think this is the time to do that. So I want to humbly ask all of us to turn on our camera so that we take a picture together. Let's put on our cameras and take a picture together. Ima, you don't have a camera. Right? Okay, thank you very much. Photos taken. Thank you very much, Mr. Haribo, for taking a picture of all of us. Um, and I saw the beautiful and the handsome faces behind the whole project. Thank you so much. Um, so before we take the closing prayer, I think as we go, we, and the take home a message is that this is a good platform for us to collaborate. So as we go through the, the, the whole course, the whole project, make sure you get someone to collaborate with, not just on the research level, but for policy and other things. Let's go with this message. And let's also get the skills that will enable us to be responsible researchers. The skills we need to be responsible um, researchers. And finally, as um, we were told, this is going to be a self-directed learning. We are going to do this on our own. And it also means that you will need a lot of discipline. Uh, you need to discipline yourself to be able to go through this course um, successfully. Thank you very much, all of us, for making time to be part of this opening session of the Research for Life um, Ghana Voter Regional Chapter train, tra Training of Trainers session this morning. We are grateful to all of you. I want to take the closing prayer from Mr. Patrick Ajobu. Mr. Patrick Ajobu, give us the closing prayer. Uh -huh. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. All right, so let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for how far you brought us with this workshop. We know it's a time for us to learn, to help God our careers, even to pro promote research and also to contribute our quota to the development of our communities and the society and the world. We thank you as we go, help us to continue to build over the things we've had and give us the ability to be disciplined, able to learn and to acquire these skills. We thank you. And so we ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So we meet again on Wednesday. But from, my, from Sunday, our resources will be on the team for us to assess them. Thank you, and God bless all of us.